Was Yuji Itadori's birth planned? And are Yuji's parents still alive? We have seen a lot of mind-blowing anime throughout the years. And to be frank, you'd think that it would be quite the challenge to try and reach the bar that the Legendary series set. But the thing is, Jujutsu Kaisen's made it look easy. This spectacular anime has it all. Epic fights on par with Dragon Ball, an elaborate story mixed with magnificent character development worth being compared to Bleach, and great mysteries that keep you on your toes. One Piece style. Add to that a goofy MC that is just a ray of sunshine, dark gloomy side character that we will probably like more than the hero, a female cast we should bow to, and most importantly, one of the most handsome daddies of the anime world, paired with eyes that can literally hypnotize you with beauty. I haven't even started talking about the mesmerizing art style and I feel like I'm describing a masterpiece. Wait a minute, it actually is a masterpiece. The manga is nearing completion and yet there are so many questions that are left unanswered. One of them being, will Gojo ever marry me? Uh, I'm straight, but I'd marry Gojo. Back to my senses and what we are curious about is the truth about Yuji Tadori and Kenjaku. Any anime fan worthy of the name already knows who those characters are, but I'll refresh your mind. What is the truth behind Yuji Tadori, Kenjaku and his parents? Are they still alive? For Firstly, who is Itadori Yuji? He's nothing important, he's just the reason the anime exists. Our MC. The happy-go-lucky pink-haired student with abnormal physical abilities. Someone who thought it was a good idea to swallow a cursed finger to make sure it doesn't fall into the enemy's hands. Or it's just that he has an appetite worse than Luffy. Now able to use cursed energy while somehow managing to retain his sanity. The exorcists are still debating whether they should just kill him or not. It just happened that the stubborn force of nature is not that easy to get rid of, or they just suck that much. Secondly, who is Kenjaku? Kenjaku who's uh, like a mad scientist trying to play God. He's one of the main antagonists of the series and wants to evolve humankind using cursed energy. I don't know about you, but if he gives me superpowers, then I think I'm all for it. Let's do it, Kenjaku. Using his cursed technique, he practically managed to turn into an immortal by gouging out his brain and transplanting it into another body over and over again. FYI, the stitch marks on his forehead aren't Kakui battle stars. So who is Kenjaku to Itadori? Do you remember guys at the very beginning of the manga, Itadori's OG grandfather was going to give us some sweet gossip about the people who raised our MC before getting rudely interrupted and depriving us from quenching our curiosity. Many theories started to come out after that. There were some hilarious ones, some that made more sense. However, none of the fans hit the mark. In chapter 143, the truth was revealed and it was a colossal shock to all of us. I just told you what Kenjaku's curse technique was, right? You didn't have time to forget. I'll stop at that. Give you some hints. Let's see if that brain of yours is worth a penny. So first hint, stitches. Second hint, Kenjaku thanking Sasaki. Third hint, your father had stitches on his forehead, right? Tough luck. Kenjaku isn't Itadori's father, but his mother. In chapter 143, we witnessed the first apparition of the woman. Her forehead, similar to Kenjaku's, was filled with huge scars. It all became crystal clear. The brain was inside her. Of course, we couldn't just base our theory on that. You know, some skeptical people just love to argue, so let's make sure they can't deny a thing. Aside from the scars, we've got some other proof to back our belief. Let's jump to chapter 160. Itadori is trying to save his childhood friend Sasuke, a friend he'd forgotten all about. Yeah, he might be the MC, but he isn't that bright, like all our fave heroes. Kenjaku enters the scene and thanks the young girl for being her or his, this is getting confusing, son's friend. You all got your mouth wide open at the moment, I guess. Don't close him yet. There is more. Think about it. If the brain is Itadori's mother, that means he is somehow related to Chozo. In a disturbing kind of way, doesn't it make him his step bro? Might as well start calling him Onichai at this point. And he got us all B because he was the first to almost guess the identity of the parents. In chapter 139, he asked Itadori if his father had scars on his forehead. He connected all the dots, just got the gender wrong. We got one mystery down and another arose thanks to it. From the very start, Gojo had a feeling about Itadori. I don't know if the sneaky bastard knew the truth or part of it maybe, but it seems he was hiding something. Then again, he always looks like he does. Who was Itadori's mother before getting possessed by the brain. It seems that she was a woman called Kaori. Kaori was probably a powerful exorcist since the brain has a penchant for them. The strong families that are known to engineer them are the Zenin, Gojo, and Kamo. Now this is pure speculation. My guess would be that she was a Zenin. That would be the only reason why she passed unnoticed even though she was a badass. A stuck up family with a power complex discriminates against women and anything that is not the norms. I can't wait to see Maki as their new head. The beast is going to show them who's boss and whoop their butts.
with her first class sarcastic smile on her face. Oops, I got sidetracked. Yeah, I like Maki. We can get back to business now. Plus, if you look at her carefully, I mean really, really carefully, doesn't she look a bit like Toji? I think she does. That was logical me talking. Now, if I had to give a biased opinion, I'd make her a Gojo. That would make Satoru Yuji's irresponsible uncle instead of secretly teaching him how to drink. Is throwing him into battles and feeding him expired fingers while getting ready to kill him if necessary? Gojo's crazy. Was Itadori's birth planned? For a brain that lived for centuries, I'm sure it knows all about birth control, right? But slip ups do happen, even for the best of us, I guess. Maybe Itadori's father was, was just, you know, irresistible or something like that, you know? However, it is logical to ask ourselves, was our MC's birth intentional or not? Considering how extraordinary Yuji is, he might have been an experiment. I mean, his physical strength is all but normal and he doesn't even go to the gym. The rate at which he absorbs techniques and learns new skills is out of the world. Let's not mention the fact that he was able to contain Sukuna's soul. Too many coincidences to think he was the work of Hazard. If the child was not the point of the brain's marriage in Itadori family, then what was its goal? Was Kaori just that extraordinary of a vessel? I doubt it. Maybe the brain truly was in love? That's even less likely. And why did it have Yuji as a baby? To make them look like a normal family? The questions keep on piling up. Since we can't really answer them right now, why not ask the perpetrators? Oh wait, are Itadori's parents dead or alive? So, the final question, are Yuji's parents still alive? Since the brain is now in ghetto, we can say for sure that the body of the mother is dead, but her soul is still in this world. As for the father, it can't be said for sure. We have no actual proof on the matter, but it would make sense to say that he is. The mother got her spotlight, now it's the father's turn. I'm sure we will have a nice detailed flashback revealing the truth about Itadori Jin in the near future. That's all I've got for you guys on this matter, and I'm pretty sure I managed to convince you all. For all the weird ones who still think they have a fighting chance, bring it on. Tell me in the comments what your theory is. I'll be happy to indulge you in a friendly debate that you will lose. Or maybe win. Who knows? It's your boy Ernie Senpai and this is Quote the Anime.